Well, hello. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about the two writers uh, that you ha you can focus on for paper number four. Now, one thing I should mention about this, as you probably noticed if you've read the directions, is that it does build on the second part of the midterm. So uh, what I mean by that is that the second part of the midterm asked you to write about that one poem uh, of Jamila Woods, uh, the one about her dad uh, and, and sort of her experiences as a kid with a father who is a doctor and he's at work so often that even when he comes home, he brings work with him. And as a result, she doesn't quite have the relationship with him that she wants. She wants to see him more often. And as a lot of you have written uh, in your comments on that poem in your midterm, that's one of the struggles in the poem. You know, she does use a lot of humor. Uh, she uses what's called playing the dozens, which is making those jokes about her dad and his forehead and his appearance uh, for the first part of the poem. Uh, but then towards the end of it, we really do get a sense that, that there's a lot of sadness, that there's a lot of uh, the sense of feeling that you've missed out on the opportunity to spend some time and to hang around with him. So we're still working on her. In fact, as you've seen from the directions, Jamila Woods really is the focus of this next assignment. And one of the little twists in it is that we're going to be using the Harper College Library database to find a source on her. Now, I'm not going to talk about that in this video. That's a little more involved and I have to use Zoom to do that because I'll do a screen share and I will show you how to use the, uh, <laughs> excuse me, I'll show you how to use the library database, okay, in the next video that I do. But for this one, I just want to talk about these two writers and a little bit about the assignment itself. Now, remember, there are two topics for this. The first topic only focuses on Jamila Woods. So if you decide to do number one, you're only focusing on her. You're finding an article about her, and you're writing about one of her poems. Uh, that could be Daddy Dozens again. It could be Deep in the Homeroom of Doom, which is one of the ones that's up on Blackboard. And there also are a few poems uh, linked to the Poetry Foundation website. So you can pick any one of those poems and focus on it for your paper. And you also have to do some research on her through the library database. And as I said, I'll, I'll show you how to use that in a separate video. So she's the main focus, not only of the first one, but also of the second topic. But in the second topic, you have an option, if you'd like to, to do a comparison between her work and the work of John Porcellino, who you're reading for this week. Now, the reason I've given you those two options uh, is, first of all, that it gives you some, some, um, some choices here so that if you feel that you can more effectively write a comparison paper between her and John Porcelino, another Chicago writer, that just gives you some other opportunities for topic number two. I don't think either one is more difficult or easier than the other one. They're just different. And so you might want to think about what your strengths are as a writer, especially here in the second half of the term, uh, to decide which one you want to do. Would you feel more comfortable just focusing on Jamila Woods and focusing on her for topic number one? Or do you feel better about doing a comparison of her to Porcelino? Would that give you more to write about? So really think about that as you're going through those assignment, um, those prompts, and think about which one you would probably do better on. Other thing I should mention about the directions for paper number four is that there's a lot of other details in it regarding the structure of the paper. This time I put the outline actually in the directions itself. Uh, I've also put in the reminder for the work cited at the end, which I'll talk more about in the video of, uh, about the online database. Um, so really read those directions, go through them. As always, email me if you have any questions about them. But today what I want to focus on a little bit uh, more about is John Porcelino. And the story that you're reading which is called Belmont Harbor, is from this graphic novel called Perfect Example. Now, I think I've mentioned before that Porcelino is originally from Hoffman Estates. Well, actually, let me back up. He was born in Chicago, lived on the northwest side of the city until he was, I think, six or seven years old, and then his family moved to Hoffman Estates. And that's why you'll notice when you're reading the story from this book, it does take place after he graduated from Hoffman High School, Hoffman Estates High School. So it's it's that summer, and it starts off actually right around the time of graduation, uh, and then eventually goes into the, 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 the months after graduation when he's applied to NIU for college, and he's waiting to go, and he's finishing up uh, high school, and he's trying to decide what he wants to major in, and you know, would Northern be a good choice for him or not? So I love teaching this book. In fact, uh, I'm going to do the whole book next semester in, in my 102 classes because it's finally back in print. It was hard to get for a while, which is why I've only given you this excerpt from it. And one thing that you'll notice about it is that much like Jamila Woods, and I have one of the books here that she's edited in the last couple of years with her poems and poems from some other Chicago writers, is that there are certain elements 
that these Chicago writers have that you're welcome to write about in your paper. And those are the following. So let me give you some suggestions as to what to look for when you're reading Porcelino and when you're also thinking about writing about Jemila Woods. First thing to keep in mind with Chicago artists and writers and musicians is that they're very often very down to earth. And again, I'm generalizing a little bit. Not every Chicago artist of the last almost whatever 200 years writes in exactly the same way. Um, but they do have some things in common. And one of the things they have in common uh, is that very straightforward way of telling their stories. Now, in Porcelino's case, that manifests itself with this really simple drawing style. And you'll notice when you read him that he he draws in a very, very simple uh, very, very simple style, very straightforward, very minimalist, if you want to use that word. And he does that by choice. He is trained as a painter. So he did eventually go to Northern for college. He got his undergraduate degree there uh, in fine arts and in painting. So he's trained as a painter. But when he does his comics, his graphic novels, he deliberately does them in a very simple style because, and you'll see this if you read the interview that I posted on Blackboard with him, he wants to get the ideas across as directly as possible. He doesn't want to include anything in his stories that gets in the way of the reader being able to understand the emotional ideas or the emotions or the feelings that he's trying to get across. Now, in the case of Belmont Harbor, that means we have him as someone who's graduating from high school feeling left out. He's trying to find a group of friends that he can hang out with. And one thing you'll notice in this story is that things don't really go so well for him, right? You get to the end of the story, uh, and I don't want to give away too much of what happens, but it's got kind of an odd ending where he does feel sort of separated, perhaps, from his friends, and he's trying to find his place. He's trying to find his purpose. He's trying to find his destiny, you could say. And he's looking ahead to go into college, and he's trying to figure things out. He's trying to figure out who he is and what he wants to do. And, and I think that's why Belmont Harbor... Uh, is such a strong piece of writing and drawing because it does all of that very simply. He he implies things. So you, when you read him, you want to read him very slowly and you want to read him carefully because you can read Belmont Harbor in 10 or 15 minutes max because there's not a lot of words in certain sections of it. A lot of it's purely images, but he's trying to convey a lot of information in a very small space. Now, the reason I teach him along with Woods and some of those other sample poems, the Cisneros and the um, the Gwendolyn Brooks, we're going to get to more later in November. Uh, I've switched things around a bit. Sometimes I do them at the midterm, but given that we're doing online classes, I want to wait to focus on them uh, on the final. So you'll eventually write a little bit about Cisneros, for example. Um, but the reason I gave you those other Chicago writers is that you'll notice that they all tend to use that same style. Very simple, very straightforward. They often write from personal experience, which you saw in Daddy Dozens. That's a memory of Jamila Woods from when she was a kid. So she's writing it as an adult and remembering those times when she was a child and not maybe understanding what her dad did for work and not understanding why he wasn't home more often. And much like Porcelino, she uses a lot of humor to convey those very sensitive topics about family and about who she was when she was a kid and who she became. So that's another element of a lot of Chicago or maybe you could say Midwestern writers. There's a personal quality to it. They're not pretentious at all. They're not trying to prove anything to you. They're not trying to, uh, to impress you necessarily. What they're trying to do is to share something with you, to share an idea, to share an experience, to see maybe if you resonate with those ideas. Maybe you'll see something in their work that resonates with your own experience. And as I'm reading your midterms this week, I'm noticing that a lot of you did pick up on that with Woods, that you found ways to connect your own experience to hers, which I think is partly what she's looking for when she's writing these poems. So when you're reading Porcelino and about his experiences finishing up at Hoffman High, getting ready to go to college, you'll notice that a lot of what he's writing about is also about the anxiety that he's experiencing, not just the anxiety of having to make these big decisions as you come to the end of your high school career, but just the anxiety that he's also dealing with that's undiagnosed. And again, if if you read the rest of this book or if you take one of my 102 classes in the spring and you read the whole thing, you'll notice that that becomes the theme of the whole book is trying to deal with what for him is this undiagnosed 
anxiety disorder that, that's not being treated and his discovering the fact that it's there, it's present, and he's trying to find a way um, to cope with it and to uh, reach out for help uh, to his friends and his family as he tries to figure out um, how best to to live with it, to work within that sort of the, the anxiety that not only makes him really creative, but that also uh, limits him at times um, because it limits his ability to make friends, initially anyway, uh, and limits his ability to enjoy himself. It's that sadness, the, the depression that comes with the anxiety that he's also coping with. So for all the humor that he uses, there's also a lot of seriousness in this story because he's trying to figure out how best to handle that to live with that anxiety, to live with that depression, but also to go forward uh, to find those things in his life that give him the hope and optimism that he sometimes feels that he's lacking. I think we see the same thing, honestly, in, in Jamila Woods. If you read the Homeroom of Doom poem, which I'll talk about in a separate video, um, you'll notice that she does the same thing. She doesn't feel like she fits in when she goes to that Catholic high school in that poem. And because she feels like she doesn't fit in, she also experiences that anxiety. You know, what is it to try to fit in uh, in circumstances where you feel out of place, uh, and how do you go about finding the group of people that you are most comfortable with where you can be yourself? That's what both of these writers are talking about in, in the case of Woods with her poems that I put up for you, and in the case of Porcelino with the story that I, I posted from this longer book, okay? So, if you want to, like I said, there's a choice here. For this paper, you can only focus on Woods and do a little bit of research on her and then use that research to analyze one of these poems. Or if you feel more comfortable about comparing them, which is probably what I would do, I'd have to think about this. When I was an undergraduate like you, um, sometimes I preferred having comparison papers because it gave me more to write about. Sometimes I had so many ideas just on one author that I didn't even need the comparison. So that could be also be the case with this. That's why I've given you the two choices. But really think about that. Think about them both as Chicago writers. Uh, think about the simplicity that they use in their writing. Think about the emotions that they're trying to get across. And also think about the fact that both of them are writing about themselves in the past. Okay, so think about this also. In Perfect Example, or Belmont Harbor, which is from this book called Perfect Example, Porcelino is writing... I believe in his late twenties was when he when he first wrote that story, and he was projecting himself back to his last year of high school. Jamila Woods also wrote that poem, Daddy Dozens, and the high school poem, Deep in the Homeroom of Doom, when she was in her mid to late twenties. So she's looking backwards. They're looking at themselves as younger people and trying to figure out how they formed their identities, how they became writers, how they became artists. They're also looking at the role that Chicago played in shaping them, and you see that I think in a lot of their work as well. And that's really the, the point of doing the research for paper number four, is to try to figure out how the city, the whole uh, the whole greater area around the city, since Porcelina grew up mostly in Hoffman Estates, how did it influence them? How did it help them form their identities? How did it help them figure out who they are as people and as artists? So that's what you're thinking about with this fourth paper. And that's pretty much going to carry us through to the end of the semester because we're going to write about Woods. We are going to do a revision assignment, as I've mentioned to some of you later in November. And then we're also going to take a look more closely later in the month, later in November, um, at, Jam at Jamila Woods' greatest influences, who are Gwendolyn Brooks and Sandra Cisneros, particularly Brooks. Cisneros, though, it was also inspired by Brooks. So those are writers we're going to get back to later in November. One thing I should also mention before I sign off is that Porcelino also is a poet and also publishes his poems. And over the next couple of weeks, I actually might post a couple of them for you. I, I didn't want to confuse you too much uh, since I want you to focus on Belmont Harbor, but he's also a poet. So that's, and he's a musician too, actually. I just remembered that. So that's another way that he and uh, Woods have a connection. So they're creative artists, they're writers, but they're also musicians and poets. So there's another kind of connection they have, aside from the fact that they're both East Chicago, or originally from Chicago, uh, in Porcelino's case. I think he lives up in Wisconsin now, so still fairly close. So there we have it. That's a little bit of an introduction to these two uh, writers and also how I'm asking you to use them for paper number four. Now in the next video, I'll go into some more technical stuff about how to use the database and how to find the article for whichever one of these topics you're going to do. So look at, look for that video next. That'll be over Zoom, so it might be a little more foggy looking um, than these videos that I, uh, I can uh, tape here on my phone. So if you have any questions, send me an email, and I will see you in the next video.